All right, guys, how's it going? Uh, got a bit of a random video for you here, as you can see. A big old brown box is on the couch in front of me, waiting for unboxing. I've just cracked it to make sure it doesn't look destroyed, but we are going to take a first look at this together. Now, um, this is actually the second big brown box that's entered the observatory this week. I ordered, may as well let the secret out right now. This is a Quattro 8 inch. I actually ordered a Quattro 10 inch as well earlier in the week, thinking it would fit. It sort of did, but unfortunately it was just a little bit too long and I was running the risk of collision with my other telescope on the opposite pier. So that had to go back. Um, all in all though, huge props to First Light Optics. They've been uh, very nice to deal with uh, and got things sorted out for me straight away. So the Quattro 10 is on its way back. This got dispatched nice and rapidly because they opted to just pay for it and get another one on the way as soon as possible rather than waiting for refunds processing and uh, things like that and here it is so let's take a look at this and i'll tell you my reasoning behind it as well um so i'm wanting to start imaging at a slightly longer focal length uh, and that's where this is really going to come in because this is 800 millimeters at f4 but actually i think f3.9 um so in this accessory box we have accessories that's magic in it a finder scope a 1.25 inch adapter the uh, stalk for the finder scope and I think a two inch adapter. I honestly, I don't really need any of that in there. So I'll just leave that boxed up and crack on with this as quick as I can. Yeah, I want to start shooting things at a longer focal length and uh, making the most of my observatory and these short nights that we tend to get here in the UK. So speed is paramount. Um, and that's where the Quattro side of things really comes in. Instruction manual, I'll take a look at that in a bit and here oh, come on release your bugger here's the scope itself i'll just put this out of the way slightly hopefully this is on camera for you guys and you can see it's got a really tiny screen so it's hard for me to <laughs> to make out but yeah let's get this unbagged i'm only able to do all this by the way thanks to all the support from you guys so huge thanks to you really that's the reason i've got this nice new gear to take a look at um let's take a look down the end all right primary mirror is lovely and clean as you would hope for a brand new telescope um ooh. secondary mirror veins are loose it seems yeah this one i don't know if you can We'll see this on camera. I just kind of lift this up, but yeah, that's uh, not great quality control there by <laughs> Skywatcher, but it's one of those things where uh, it's easy enough to notice early on. And I will be giving this a full collimation job anyway. Um, huge thanks to uh, a friend and subscriber, Ken, uh, who sent an Ocal electronic collimator over so I can actually get this thing in as fine fettel as, uh, <laughs> as possible. So it, everything looks fine on this. One thing you may notice, also if I can just hopefully get this in the light for you, not sure how well that's showing up, but there are ray traced knife edge baffles inside this tube. And that's, um, that's limited to the Quattro range, just the eight inch and the 10 inch um, in that series. And they do that to improve the contrast on the images. Basically it kind of stops light being able to bounce around in the tube and make its way back up towards your uh, your comb corrector, your camera, and ruining contrast. So um, nice to see. And I have had. Let me think. I think this will be my my fifth Quattro that I've ever owned. I've owned one eight inch before, and uh, three other ten inch Quattros over the years. But I had a bit of a love hate relationship with them because at the time I was of course carrying everything out and setting up each session and the collimation just wasn't stable enough. So I was having to collimate every single session, bit of a pain in the rear, if I'm being honest with you. Whereas this is gonna remain just parked in my observatory the whole time. So I'm expecting it to be pretty stable, really, uh, between sessions. Now, I, I did order a few other bits as well from First Light Optics, which all arrived very promptly. I've got a secondary mirror dew heater right there that wraps around the stalk and then heats that secondary mirror just basically by radiating onto it. I needed 
to order one of these. So just a 13 inch, in this particular case, Losmandy. Dovetail as my EQA only accepts Losmandy dovetails. So this Vixen one, no use for me right there. And oh yeah, I ordered also, of course, it's currently on this setup when I was testing the 10 inch, but uh, the coma corrector. So I've got the Applin Attic coma corrector for the F4, F5 Newtons, uh, as I believe it's the best one possible for that sort of price range. Really always been very happy with those things. So um, yeah, having a bit of a change in setup. Now, this does also leave me <laughs> with another bit of a situation because I've got of course, if it's just safe to pull this out, underneath here, my trusty wah, Esprit 120, which has been a beautiful scope. And, uh, you know, I absolutely love the thing, but I feel like I've shot everything with it now. <laughs> I really don't have much desire left to keep using this for uh, any longer. So the money that this has cost, will more than get recouped uh, by, I think, my decision to sell this uh, and get some, some cash back in the old bank account as it's taken a battering just recently. But that's life, innit? Hey guys, how's it going? I was originally just going to leave this as literally just an unboxing, but the opportunity came to get first light uh, just a few days after I actually recorded that. So I've decided to add this extra little scene here. So I'll just jump over show you exactly what we're looking at on uh, Nina right now so as you can see I've decided to shoot M51 with this thing for its first light session just taking three minute exposures uh, dithering every fourth frame is what I've got it set to do and we're just going to keep on shooting right the way through because it actually looks set to be clear all the way through for a change which is nice to see um, I will try and set up a bit of a time lapse so you can get an idea of the conditions on the night but we've got a small crescent moon uh, and the scene looks pretty good, all things considered, actually. So it's going to be a good first light test. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, my friend Ken did send me over the Ocal electronic collimator, which was actually really handy for getting, especially the secondary mirror set up on the Quattro because it was significantly derotated, I'll be honest. Um, as we mentioned during the unboxing, one of the mirror vein supports was completely loose and upon closer inspection as well, the mirror vein supports were also decentered. So I've centered everything back up, got it all set as accurately as I possibly could, thanks to the Ocal, which made things uh, a lot simpler right there. But while I did finish initial collimation with the Ocal, the first few subframes that I took um, after collimating that way actually showed that it wasn't perfectly collimated in that case, which was interesting, I think, which I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Ocal, so I'm leaning way more towards the idea that it's probably something that I've done. I've got something wrong because I'm unfamiliar with the system. But nevertheless, uh, I took the camera off, repacked the scope, and just went through my usual method of collimating using uh, the Farpoint laser and then the Cheshire collimating system and sure enough if we just take a look at this subframe right here so we'll zoom in and show you the center sharpness is beautiful um, we'll take a look at some of the corners there's a, an edge top left corner really nice looking stars bottom left corner perfect bottom right looking perfect and top right also looking spot on so Thankfully, I haven't lost my torch. I can still collimate an F4 scope, which is nice to see. Um, you know, what can I say? This is one of the things. It's a user collimatable telescope. I know that I've signed up for all this, and I don't really mind. It's a bit of fun, and what it gives me is a, a great punch at the night sky, really, for, uh, for my pound, if you will. It's a great value telescope, and I think I'm going to have an awful lot of fun with this. I mean... One three minute exposure is showing tons and tons and tons of detail on M51 here, so uh, I'm impressed. Anyway, guys, listen, you know what I'm like. Anybody who watches my videos, I'm like, let's go on and on and on and on. It's a bad habit, maybe, but some of you guys like it, so uh, much love to you all either way. So I'm going to leave it here and just say I hopefully will have a nice image of M51 to share with you for my first light with this telescope. Probably lots and lots more to come. Um, as I'm enjoying using it already, you know what I mean? It's a lot of fun, and uh, 
I've got so many ideas flowing around in my head now of things that I can shoot with this thing. Um, so that's it. That really is it this time. So look after yourselves, guys. Thanks ever so much for all your support. I couldn't do it without you. Um, yeah. See you in the next one. Clear skies. <laughs>